In this video, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to MIG weld stainless steel exhaust. Uh, this is not something I would recommend, but if you don't have a TIG and you want to do a stainless exhaust project, you know, without having to invest in a whole TIG setup, this is how you're going to do it. What you'll need to do this is stainless steel 304, I'm doing two and a half inch pipe, stainless steel wire, I'm using flux core. You need solar flux or the ability to back purge, but since you don't have a TIG, I bet you also don't have the stuff to back purge like me. So you'll need solar flux and heat, which is just something you can find at any auto parts store. That's how it's going to mix up. And I'll show you how to do that shortly. An angle grinder and uh, patience. Let's get to it. Here we are. Another beautiful day in Southern California, ready to get some uh, welding done. You'll need a MIG welder. You'll need stainless steel wire minus flux core. Yours doesn't have to be if you're running gas. Here's the settings I'm running. I'm running basically like a two and a half on my wire speed and a H on my uh, voltage. Basically, you want to run it really hot and pretty slow and you're going to be running very, very small passes. So what you'll do is once you get them lined up, no gap, you can see that they line up really nicely. And this is the same for straight pipes. This is the same for pie cuts, angles, you name it. Less gap is better. Then you're gonna take this, switch it out for a grinder. Okay, and we're gonna bevel the edges of this. Okay, so I'll even do like a little graphic. You're going to take these edges and instead of being flat, instead of being flat like that on every edge, you're going to have it slightly beveled and slightly beveled. And that's going to give just a little bit of uh, the wire, you know, somewhere to pool into rather than just sort of spreading out. You want it to go in. Uh, before you uh, weld, you'll add, you'll clean it off with some acetone. We'll add some solar flux mixed with heat, let it let the heat sort of dry out so it's just the solar flux left and then we're going to weld it. All right. As you can see here we've got a bevel you know all the way around and we didn't we didn't pull any material from the inside because we still want that seam. So you can see that together, it still lines up really well, but now you see that little divot. All right, dipped a little shop towel in the acetone. You gotta be careful of not catching too much material because it'll sort of bite on it. But take this acetone and go very far away from your welder because there is nothing acetone wants to do more than catch on fire. So let's wipe this down. So now let's clean the inside. You can see that it's picked up a little bit from the shop cloth, so make sure we get all that off because that's going to add contaminations into our weld. We're going to grab our heat and grab our little bit of solar flux. I've used this in a previous job, so I've got some sort of leftover in there. You don't need too much. A little goes a long way. I'm going to splash some heat in there. Okay. Probably don't breathe it in too much. So we're going to mix this up. Get all of the dry solar flux sort of wet and spreadable. And we're going to go here and gently apply it right on the seam. Boom. Look at that. Now this will dry out pretty quickly, especially if you don't do it too wet. Boom, there we go. So we've applied the solar flux inside both pipes. What we'll do is if we see any on the outside here, we'll hit it with a quick wipe down with the acetone, but it actually looks like we did pretty good. We'll move this. We'll take our acetone soaked rag and move it away from our welding table. Ask me how I know. All right, so let's uh, quickly run through what we're gonna do here. 
I'm gonna power this on. Welder's on. Because I'm using flux core between every single weld, I will be cutting the end off because typically you're gonna get a cleaner weld that way. What I'll do for this right now is I'm going to grab it, throw it on a tack, make sure it holds, rotate it, and do another tack. So that's two tacks, making sure that it doesn't bend too much, throwing in a good amount of heat to make sure it penetrates since it's cold, but not too much heat that it deforms because stainless steel likes to deform. Here we go. We're gonna rotate it. And we're gonna weld one more tack. Already it's holding its own. We'll wipe this off and then we can get into the actual welding out of this, uh, of this piece. first two tack welds. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> you can see on that one, that's actually what we're trying to do. Rather than right here, you know, I'm sort of just doing small right on the seam. On this one, I'm overshooting, overshooting, and I'm dragging the puddle the pool through the seam. You can see here is a, you know, a weld that's actually a little too quick, a little too rapid. The movements are a little too small going back and forth. And here's what you want to see, okay? Where we're jumping past the seam, we're letting it pool into the bevel, and we're getting really, really good penetration. We're getting really, really good coverage and we're guaranteeing that there's no leaks. With these, there's probably some pinholes. With these, there's, there's no opportunity for, for the weld to not penetrate everywhere it needs to. You can see the difference in the coverage. It's wider and it's a little lower versus this one's a little narrower and quite a bit taller. So yeah, there you go. That's your tip on how to do it. Keep it wide, keep it slow, hit a, hit a spot, jump, hit a spot jump, hit a spot. You can do three or four spots. Stop, wire wheel it off, make sure to get all the flux. And then all new spots, all new spots. And then eventually you'll need to connect all the spots that you've done, okay? Start from here, you know, slight overlap and you're gonna come down and, you know, slight overlap. Cause if you don't overlap, you're obviously gonna have some exhaust leaks, okay? Um, and if you wanna make your life easier where you finish your overlap, you can actually grind down a little bit. So there you go. We've learned how to effectively weld stainless steel with stainless flux core wire. You've learned sort of what to do, what not to do, and you've learned a cost-effective way without having to invest in TIG setup. I would recommend getting a TIG eventually, uh, but if you're just doing one job and trying it out and seeing if you like it, this is a great way to start. But yeah, you just have to be patient with this and be careful you don't blow through high heat, low time, let it cool. That's it. That's all I got for you today. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, if you want any uh, other tips, tricks, or you have any questions, shoot them in the comments below. Thanks, guys.